The fact is the vast majority of our police are honest and hard-working, doing a job that I guess we all respect. That's the way most of us see them in real life too, and not surprising, uh, police dramas have always been Australia's most popular television programs, and no man has been more successful producing popular TV cop shows than Hal McElroy, the man behind Blue Heelers, Water Rats, and now Murder Corps. Here's a man who not only knows how police work, he also obviously knows what makes you tick. I wasn't sent here on earth to, to set new standards in, in uh, gratuitous violence um, or explicit language. Uh, you know, we, we've got drama that we're, we're showing people, uh, Australian characters in dramatic situations. I don't believe that swearing and violence is absolutely necessary for that drama to be real or valid. You know, I, I like to think we can make good drama without it. Blue Healers is where the gospel, according to Hal McElroy, shines brightest. This is the most successful Aussie TV drama of all time. Got a better idea, junior detective, or should I say, constable? An unstoppable ratings monster at home, Blue Healers has also rounded up fifty million dollars in export earnings. And if you want the perfect pair to police this McElroy morality, then who would you summons except John Wood and Lisa McHugh? I was uh, just going to finish these for Nick. She's a tremendously strong woman in real life. She plays a strong character, but she plays her also with a sense of vulnerability, that she can make mistakes, that she could get hurt and, and, and bewildered by her job. Uh, and that's tremendously attractive. I didn't really think that Melanie Baldwin was that terrific. Oh, really? No, not as terrific as you. Don't start, PJ, it's no, too late. I'm not starting I think credibility, believability, is tremendously important. And physicality is part of that. And by that I mean that do I believe that John Woods looks like a police sergeant in a country station? Yes, I do. Do I believe that Colin Friels looks like a knockabout working class uh, copper in the water police. Yes, I do. Do I believe that Lucy Bell looks like a very intuitive, brilliant, somewhat um, neurotic police investigator? Yes, I do. I think if you look at the principal cast of every show that I do, you like every, every actor. Just something about their face. Now, that's a quality that people are used to in everyday life. You see the boss, the new boss come in, you say, oh, I like the look of that guy. Or, mm, I think he's someone I don't like, that's the same with, a, with an audience, you know, really. It's the same human response. And so I look for, for actors that have a warmth um, and, uh, and an intelligence. Can they be too beautiful? Can they be too handsome? Yeah, often, yeah. Because um, look at the cast of characters, you've got some beautiful women and some, uh, and some interesting heads. blokes. Yeah. <laughs> what would it rate? Oh, 31 in Melbourne, 33 Sydney. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> what was it I read in the paper? The Midas touch? Is that what I read somewhere? Midas, yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> We've got two kids at school. The daughter has just started work. We've got a mortgage. Uh, you know, we read the same magazines. Uh, we read the same newspapers. We watch the same television. And the, and the kids watch the same videos and play the same video games. They're very, very important in everything I do, and, and my wife in particular, because she's a very strong, a clear-eyed, intuitive 40 plus female you know and she's also the smartest person i've ever met so she her opinion counts for more than tail. anybody in the world you know i do your question mark tail action so this party on the charter boat tell us about it, uh, it was for that rock in the high risk business of tv drama hal mcelroy is the man with the midas touch everything he touches seems to turn to gold oh well we'll need to know well i don't want my husband involved in this he is the executive producer. He gives the orders and people usually obey. Sit, 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 <laughs> sit, With his wife and long-time partner, Di, they form Team McElroy. So if she says, no, it doesn't work, even watching an episode on Monday or Tuesday night, if she watches an episode, uh, does that uh, hit you in the Oh, in the yes, heart? that stops in my tracks. You know, in fact, she kind of has veto <laughs> over everything, particularly casting. She's sensational with casting. I wouldn't consider using 
an actor in a key role unless Di felt they were right. Because as a woman, she's very intuitive, as, as every woman in your audience would know. Uh, men tend to think about the physical uh, and about politics. Women, you know, make real simple choices like, I like his face, I think she's a bitch, or whatever. Uh, and we tend not to see that. We say, oh, she's got fabulous hair, a great body, and she's saying, yeah, but she's a cow. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Um, <laughs> so that'll be it, that'll be... Yeah, oh, rip, rip up the contract. Oh, yeah. The original Team McElroy was in fact the brothers McElroy, Hal and his twin brother Jim, who skipped school in Melbourne Look. to spend their days at Hanging Rock. Not down at the ground, Edith. Way up there in the sky. Their credits since then read like a showreel of Australian films and hit television drama. Picnic, The Last Wave, Razorback, and Return to Eden. Ending up with Hal producing the highly acclaimed feature film, The Sum of Us. Well, up your bum. <coughs> it's just a joke. Dad's always making jokes. Oh, yeah, Do you miss making movies? No, I don't. Um, I really don't. I maybe should feel embarrassed about that, but I don't. Um, what I like about television is its teamwork. What's the best movie that you ever made? Uh, I suppose Pinkney and Hang Rock would be the one that most people recognise as being the most successful, and I'm certainly very proud of it. I don't really talk about it. My kids came home from school and said, they'd studied Pinkney and Hang Rock, and they said, oh, Dad, uh, did you produce it? I said, yeah. And, and I hadn't told them, why would you tell your children that? I can put the same three years getting ready to make a television series and then see it run for five years now and provide work for 100 people for five years. That's a pretty good result, isn't it? So this is your bus? Yeah, this is how we get to work every day. <laughs> In the middle of Sydney Harbour, Goat Island is where McElroy now produces water rats. This was home to Australia's first water police until rats and the bubonic plague, a hundred years ago, sent the cops scurrying, and now they're back. That was one of the key cells of the, of the show when we went to the uh, MIP television festival in Cannes. We, we said, great cities, the promo line that I wrote was, great cities give you great cop shows. Remember Naked City, remember Streets of San Francisco, Miami Vice. Well, Water Rats is basically one of the great cities of the world, Sydney. Australians are very proud of Sydney. Um, and the harbour and they love it that we put it on screen and of course Sydney people just you know I drive down the street and I'm a hero you know <laughs> yo how you know, I'm I'm of Sydney. yeah <laughs> camera action uh, this is our main wharf along here you can see one of these police launches there that's the the nemesis and uh, alongside there's a boat there from the National Parks and Wildlife this is a moment from next year's water rats believe it or not They'll see this picture postcard in El Salvador and on the Gaza Strip, from Guatemala to Somalia. For Australia's image around the world, it's a case of when you've got it, flaunt it. Oh, indeed. I mean, I think you could count the people watching Water Rats in the hundreds of millions. Yeah, well, Turning over! Now, that's a remarkable achievement. That means people in... And do you stop and think of that? Hal, you produce, <laughs> you produce a television series that's watched by hundreds of millions of people. I don't actually, to be honest. I, it's like, wow, now that I say it. Uh, and the shows can go on and on and on, and people learn and grow. We, the, the girl who's the clapper loader today, that's the person who bangs that clapper board, was, on the last season, was uh, a catering assistant. But she devoted her life to getting into the business. She started washing dishes, and now she's in the camera department. And in a couple of years, she might be a cameraman, camera person. That's great, isn't it? You know, I love to be part of that. Um, on a feature film, there's no way. They'd say, ha, huh, sorry, forget it. Go wash dishes. Round the outside, round the outside. Salad travelling. So despite all the glamour, I mean, this is it. This is like a Hollywood studio, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, the whole yeah. box and dice is in, here. In a tin shed. Yeah. In a tin shed. <laughs> <laughs> Aussie style. Yeah, right. <laughs> Hello, water rats from Tasha's. Clearly, whatever you've tapped into is universal, not just Australian. Okay. It doesn't surprise me that they like it in Israel this week. I'm delighted, but I'm not surprised because I kind of made it that way. We're dealing with basic and important social issues and human issues. Honesty, life and death. Good guys. Um, you know, good guys, bad guys, that sort of thing. This isn't mysterious to people in Jordan or people in Chile. They understand it.
Uh, the American market's always been difficult, always been... You can't crack that, can you? ...very, very hard for both feature films and television. Uh, Why? Americans are really pretty xenophobic. Australian film and television is like, um, you know, anchovies on a pizza for them. What they're really interested in is the pizza, not the anchovy.